Okay, folks. Let me uh, get to the right one. There we go. So, I'm going to be talking about the uh, Leica Q3 compared to, let's say, the R62 or SL2S. Now, you've probably seen these uh, type of pictures before, and I am going to do something else. There you go. I'm going to bring myself in here. And I don't know where to put myself. I'll, I'll put it right down here. Okay, right here in the corner. And I'm going to do this. Do that a little bit. Move up right here. Okay. All right. So, I took some pictures last night. And I'm... I'm what started all this conversation was I was looking for the right focal length for street photography. Now, I like the R6 Mark II. I put most of the cameras, and I'll do this right here, at uh, mechanical shutter speed because I'm not in wildlife. I'll do landscapes, maybe a bird, squirrel, or something, but it's only like one shot, okay? Less rolling shutter and stuff. Uh, video is a whole different story, but for photo shooting, I put everything on mechanical. That way it's safe. I have the IBIS on. Um, anyway, so I'm looking at the, the right focal length to deal with. And then I started getting an idea like, well, I have some expensive equipment. You know, I have like a whole, just about all of the Nikon lenses, minus about six of them, you know, at the higher end, um, plus the uh, Trio, you know, the 14 to 24, 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200, okay? I, I got the equivalents, but without the uh, VR, okay? And I was thinking, it's much easier with one camera, just one camera, 60 megapixel. And when I change the focal lengths, it'll get smaller, all right? So the file sizes aren't that bad. And I, I can deal with it pretty good. So this is a $6,000 camera, but it has a built-in lens, it has macro, it has 8K recording, 4K, of course. And I'm thinking, Everything in one package, put in my camera bag, which is only about six pounds, carry batteries. I have a dummy battery for it, power bank. I can go all day. So it's much easier to carry one simple item that can do everything compared to other cameras that I have to carry a lot of lenses with. That's why I'm going to show you this. So if you look at this slideshow, and I'll do it real quick right here. I'll just turn it on. And we're going to go to the slideshow. Okay. As I go scrolling through these um, different things, now you're going to see it go up and down and stuff. Um, sorry about that. It just... Uh, when I put it in uh, portrait mode, and if it's like higher than 4K, that I'm viewing this on a 2.5K uh, monitor. But look out, you can even see the stars. Even on TV, all right, different lighting. And I'm looking at... I am seeing the colors, actually, that I'm viewing through either the viewfinder or the LCD screen, or live view, as they could say. 
And I'm happy with it. So I have taken different cameras, pictures of these cranes that they have with the hospital that they're building in my neighborhood. And it cannot pick up the blue lights. Uh, that last scene was a cobweb holding a piece of grass and as I open up the garage door. But look at these different shots of the moon, the different lighting. This is a 60 megapixel camera. And you're getting some pretty good uh, lighting. You, you can even see in those windows the reflection of the cranes. You can see the clouds at night, and it's pitch dark. My eyes can't see this. They can see the clouds barely. But look at that. You can see the blue and red on those where the other cameras can't pick it up. And I tried it at F16, 22, you name it. Different apertures, raw files, JPEGs. They all look pretty good. I don't see any lens distortions. And I do see bokeh. So right now, these are in the raw files. Did different pictures with the moon behind the clouds. Tree. Uh, I've compared the hive to JPEG to uh, raw files. And when I came to the conclusion, these, this slideshow that you're seeing, and, and look at this. When I did it to F16, you know, you saw kind of like the, uh, not the flaring, but you know, the uh, moon stars, or I, I don't know what you call it. It looked fantastic. Now I'm in the daytime. The clouds, I might see a little distortion right there where part of the house is like this, okay? But, all the pictures are sharp. Small point and shoot camera, 60 megapixel. Did all that. Uh, Leica sent me a, a email because they're a little bit worried with the SL3 having problems, but other things is like they wanted my input on what I thought. What would I be looking for, let's say, with the new SL2S? So I think they have something in the pipeline where they had the SL2, which was like a 47 megapixel camera. And then they came out with the SL2S, which was a, you know, 24, better for low light. I think they're going to do the same thing with the SL3. Okay. Um, I love the SL2S. Um, I was hoping I had the uh, SL2, but instead I got the S, looked it up, and then I started liking the performance, okay? Um, love the cameras. Love to take them out all the time. Love doing the uh, different lenses, experimenting. I got macro lenses. I adapt lenses to other camera systems. I have one now where I can autofocus like a manual lenses on my Nikon. I got another adapter coming for the same lenses to work on Sony, okay? Uh, the Sony mirrorless. So I love experimenting. I love the uh, first mirrorless system that came out with Nikon, the Nikon One. These are all macro shots that you're looking at, you know, until I went back to here from this one camera. 60 megapixel camera. And you can see when I got closer to certain things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have my 4K monitor, but anyway, just to let you know, the color looks good. It's matching what I'm seeing. Look at the clouds, and I can put it at F16, have everything sharp and stuff. But I just want your input saying, hey, 
Do I need all this gear? Or can I do everything in one camera? Yeah, let me get it right. One camera. So anyway, thank you for watching. Let me get out of this. I think I'm going to go to a, another file. Let's see. Which one do I want to end it with? See, there's my cat. All right, these are macro shots. They're pretty good. I might have gotten a little bit too close, but that was real close to my live oak tree, and I was only like this far away. Um, yeah, they don't look like they're doing it, but uh, anyway, just, just going back. Yeah, if you see like four or five in a row, it didn't work, you know, um, just to show you on the... Um, how small that they got, but uh, that is what I want to show you, okay? I think that's a fabulous shot. It's kind of like a sun star, right? So I'll end it right there. Thank you for watching. Remember, stay safe, keep smiling, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, folks. Have a wonderful day.